and welcome to Africa Today. I am Esther Mopariola. From new frontiers emerging to old concepts evolving, growing political demands across Africa are now capable of reawakening consciousness, reshaping opinions, and resetting ideologies. With 123 days away from Nigeria's 2019 general election, political discourse continues to focus on the need to ensure responsive, inclusive, and participatory governance with the youth at the forefront of representative decision-making at all levels. And so we ask, what are your thoughts on the level of youth participation in the Nigerian political space ahead of the general election in 2019? You can join the conversation and share your thoughts with us on Twitter at TVC News NG. We take a report and Africa Today will continue. Welcome on board. Often called Africa's most populous nation, Nigeria has a lot of potential going by the amount of natural and human resources. And this includes a growing young and vibrant population. Only months ago, a bill reducing the age limits for political office was signed into law, enabling young persons to run for more offices. The not too young bill is a farce. The not too young bill is just a statement of fallacy. Why? You discover that how many you do you think can purchase a 45 million era nomination form? You also agree that the presidential aspirant list is out now. How many youth do you think is among them? And why do you think the youth are not among them? It is not unconnected with the fact that the youths who are even battling with unemployment, how would they get the resources to muster together for them to contest? According to INEC, the electoral body in Nigeria, youths make up about 63 to 65% of voting population, but there are challenges getting them to actively participate in elections. It starts for the political parties they must make conscious efforts to begin to give youth the chance. If you look at a president like Macron of France, at his current age, like close to about 40 now, he's a president of France. But before now, he was a minister under former president Sarkozy. So therefore, that means that he even got to government, even much younger before then. That is a that is a, a process. That is that is a, a society that gives opportunities to young people with brilliant ideas. It's difficult for a man who is 35 years old to be a governor in Nigeria. Talk less of being a president, because in the first instance, the orders are set before you. It's about time that the Nigerian youth stood up to be counted and vote for political positions. Uh, I mean, present themselves at the grassroots level so that they can be the drivers of this nation and stop living in illusion that there is a tomorrow. The hope of nations, especially in Africa, lies in the youth and engaging them in productive activities is paramount to having a better society. Before we get into the discussion of the day, let's update you on some of the top news stories around Africa. Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi has arrived in Russia on a visit expected to further boost ties between the two nations. The Gambia has launched a Truth and Reconciliation Commission to look into human rights abuses carried out during the role of former President Yahya Jammeh. The family of kidnapped Tanzanian dollar billionaire Mohamed Duji says it will give a reward of $440,000 for information leading to his rescue. Now joining me to look at youth participation in politics, I have Adeni Ujikutu, youth leader and a politician. I also have Alfred Kemepadu, policy analyst and member, youth council, and he joins us from Abuja Studios. Good to have you gentlemen on the program. Thank you. Now let me begin with you now, Ujikutu. How would you assess the level of youth participation in Nigerian politics? Um, in terms of percentage or in terms of um, understanding, participation, mm. 
or political education or political involvement. So the truth of the matter is, whichever way you want to look at it, um, when you say the youth wants to um, are into politics or participating in politics, the research is solid academic research by um, one of the renowned political scientists um, in the name of um, Dr. Dion Alkanine. Um, I think is the HOD political science in Lagos State University. There was a research he, you know, he shared with me, and really I wanted to break it down right. today, that even in the 60s, First Republic, 1960 to 1966, youths were more involved in political development than what we have today. So, but however you want to look at it, political education that has to do with the understanding, sharing of information, access to information has increased because of the use of the internet. Mm. We share information better, we get involved better, and all that. But in terms of participation, mm -hmm. um, people are more complacent. And why is that? Um, we must say the truth. The truth is, the issue of money politics has actually affected participation. Hmm. You know, if you have data, you can get informed. So political information, <laughs> political education is deepening. People are getting more aware. People are getting more informed. But people's involvement in terms of being a field player in politics cannot be compared to what we had in the First Republic. It is a little bit better in Second Republic, but it's dropping now because of some of those factors. One, the money involvement. Two, the fear factor. How do I mean? The fear factor in the sense that, you know, there is this fear that is created around, you know, getting into politics. Okay. So, and it's deliberate somehow because some people want to probably create fear in the mind of possible, you know, prospects mm -hmm. that can come in and probably do well. They will create fear that, ah, somebody told me, one of the people that are contesting, young people that are contesting for president, he said that um, when they say that, ah, don't get into politics, when he said he wanted to contest, somebody now said, ah, they kill that they will kill you, they will something like uh, the fair factor that I said. Mm. Now, he now told the person in reply that, how many people die every day? Because one day, you know, every day people die because of different causes, you know, health issues, accidents, and what have you. But surely Nigerian politics has moved beyond that these days. No, because it is developing. Okay. We are getting involved. Now, if you get into political office, everybody is watching you. The, you know, level at which people will monitor you, who, you know, was, is better than what it used to be in 1999, mm -hmm. even in this republic. Mm -hmm. So what we are saying is, the mindset, the understanding is increasing, but the people coming into it, you know... It's not appreciable. You know, it's not as compared to mm. as before. All but right. the challenge is, is, they have the money issue because of the quantum of money. If we want to look at the issue of um, not too young to rule or how, you know, what's not mm. young, yeah, to, go not ahead. young to rule, mm. the amendment of section 65 and 177 mm. of, and 131 of 1999 constitution, as it has to do with the age reduction, you know, for the House of Assembly and what have you to 35 Senate, you know, like that, that brought it down. Now, if somebody wants to contest after university education, you want to contest for an house of assembly. For instance, let's say the person works in a good you know, company okay. and they pay him more 40,000 naira. If he saves a 40,000 every month, in a year it's going to be 480,000. Absolutely. This 480,000, if he saves and he graduates at the age of 20 mm -hmm. and he wants to contest into the house of assembly at the age of 25, taking full advantage of this amendment, 
you now see that it can ordinarily save a 2.4 million naira. Mm. So in other words, it's very expensive for now, the young is, ones now. Because it is very expensive, mm. it is the major impediment, even if people feel they need to, mm. is one of the major impediments that will not allow the youth to participate right. or get involved. Now, let me quickly come to you now, Alfred. What's your position on this? Do you think the youth have really explored the opportunity of being a part of Nigerian politics? Yeah, yeah definitely they have explored being a part of Nigerian politics, but um, I can agree with many analysts who say that they need to deepen it. Uh, let the youth not participate in the, uh, in the Nigerian political space, just on the social media, by tweeting and... Uh, WhatsApping away their time and without really translating it to the different polling units and um, word. And okay, it seems we have an, a, a bit a of an interference. Alfred, I'm sorry, I have to interrupt this discussion right now. As soon as we get that sorted out, we will continue with our discussion with you, uh, Alfred. Let me call back to you now, um, Ojikutu. Among the presidential candidates now, there are a handful of young minds vying for the position. You know, we have the li likes of Showare, we have the likes of Mogalu, we have the likes of Donald Duke, and we have the likes of um, Obiese Kwesli. Now, these young ones, they, some have said, okay, fine, it's something that we've expected. We wanted young minds to be a part in politics, and it's what we want. So, some are saying that they might not have the uh, ability to clinch this uh, ticket in 2019. What are your thoughts? Um, you know, I said that Nigeria... Nigerian politics still has to do with, you know, a lot of money, you know, involvement. And the truth must be said. The truth must be said. The issue of money is still part of our politicking in Nigeria. And it is so because the size of our pre presidential style because we run a presidential system of government which has to do with you know, f you know three layers of government. Hmm. The local government, the state government, and the federal government. Right. So now, for you to emerge as the president of Nigeria, for instance, you have to have network, you have to have structures, you have to have representatives, you have to have you know, people that are members of your political party across the 774, should I come again? 774 local governments in right. Nigeria. Mm. So 774 local governments for an individual without the backing or the structure of a party that is, you know, okay. well-structured and has is, you know, Okay, let's, let me hold your th thought for now because we need to go on this very quick break. You're watching Africa Today. And we'll be looking at the youth participation in politics in Nigeria ahead of the 2019 election. We'll have more in just a moment. In May 2018, President Muhammad Buhari signed the Not Too Young to Run bill into law, providing a legal framework for a wider spectrum of young Nigerians to run for political offices. Now, before, before now, there had been a growing demand for young minds and fresh hands to assume political leadership in 2019 and inject new East ideas into the system. But it seems the enthusiasm is gradually fizzling out following the recent outcome of party primaries across the nation. So yes, we have Alfred Pemedo, policy analyst, a member of Joy Youth Council, joining me from Abuja. I hope I can hear you clearly now without any interference, Alfred. Well, now let's quickly come back to the question I can asked you, you earlier. Fine. What's your assessment on the level of youth participation? Do you think we have explored all areas there? With respect to... Youth participation in government is fair enough, but uh, the youths just need to take it beyond uh, their platforms such as WhatsApp and Facebooking and all that social media and try to translate it to uh, what it practically means in our different polling units, I mean political polling units in our political worlds, and see how they can take advantage of the knowledge they have from whatever platform or whatever education they have 
to interrogate uh, candidates of different political parties and reconcile them with uh, whatever they have profiled those candidates to be in the past and see how the ballot can speak. But um, practically speaking, uh, let me also say this. Uh, there is a new challenge that is facing the youths, and that challenge may not necessarily be uh, the amount that is usually mouthed to buy forms mm. for political positions. Of course, the forms are expensive, but uh, they are still within the reach of being afforded. Uh, I say so because for a youth uh, that wants to participate in politics, uh, there is a form of ingenuity and innovation and productivity that is expected of you. Yes, I can agree that uh, the amount for the forms can be lower, but being a youth that is being productive in stuff you are doing can have you afford the form. But the major problem, as we can see currently, is the issues that have been introduced in recent times, mostly by this government, if you permit me to say, the issues of vote buying. Uh, so you begin to ask how many youths will be innovative enough, will be productive enough to be able to afford um, forms from the different political parties I will want to contest an election and still go the mile of paying for votes. So these are the challenges we are facing. The second thing you may also want to ask again is, in recent times we have also discovered the interference, the intimidation and the harassment of voters like we, re we have noticed in recent elections. This is just not my report. This is a report from the European Union, the United Kingdom, um, the American uh, government and our friends in the town. So you begin to ask how many youths have uh, control over this security apparel. So the challenges we used to have as youths even before the not to run to young bill has now been increased to the challenges of security agencies interfering with elections. So I think like the proverbial uh, saying that uh, when the bed begins to fly without patching, then the hunter also now begins to uh, learn how to shoot without missing. So right. we have a new challenge that as youths of this country, specifically in the coming elections, we need to all come together to begin to solve. Do yes, we come now, together? How do, youth, we, how do we Alfred, approach the security agencies? You, you know, the youth definitely has a role to play in governance, like you rightly put it. But some have said that some of these youths, they have gone in for the top positions. We're talking about those who have gone in for president, for instance. Not many are talking about the grassroots politics, talking about being a local council, being a local council chairman, being a councillor, being a House of Reps member or a member of a House of Assembly, you know. So many of them we know are gone in for the top position. So is it more of inexperience? Because if you are talking about youth who want to be a part in governance, they have to start from somewhere. But what we have these days are youth gone in for the top job. So is it that they didn't plan well? Because if you want to compare a Nigeria and other countries in the world, you have Canada, you have France, you have young leaders, but they started from somewhere. They started from being you know, representatives of their local communities before they become, became uh, presidents and leaders of their countries. I, I, I completely agree with you um, with respect to youth not just jumping to the top position without a formal ap apprenticeship. I can give you an example from Bayelsa State, you understand? What the governor has been able to do is to involve young ones uh, in form of senior special assistants, special advisors, and even a few cabinet positions for commissioners so they can learn the ropes. I do not subscribe to any youth jumping on a position just for the fun of it or just because he wants to satisfy his ambition or his overzealousness. Because governance all over the world is too serious for anybody to take for granted. So I will appeal to youth that even if you are so experienced in your private sector, your private sector is totally different from the public sector. You need to give yourself the space to learn the ropes. You need to understand that there is a political dictionary, there is a political culture that is different from your private practice. So youth should not just jump at uh, uh, um, the, 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 the top of the jobs, but there should be a process of uh, learning and getting this. But that does not mean to say that for youths, like some of whom we have in Bayelsa State that have learned the ropes, like we have some young commissioners, young special advisors that have ever should not be given the opportunity to go for the top jobs if they have, within this period, put on the capacity in terms of their training, in terms of their apprenticeship, in terms of their 
tutelage, you understand? Uh, uh, there is nothing wrong them going into the top jobs because uh, over time, those youths who may be few may have may have may have learned uh, the ropes and the discipline. Right. Example of a successful youth who is doing very well, like you can compare to anyone in the world, is is Okoye. Okoye of uh, Anambra State. It is a two-time commissioner now in Anambra State, and he's doing fantastically well. Okay. And there are other youths. After all, Donald Duke was a very sound youth until today. He was one of the fantastic governors Nigeria has ever produced. He right. was he was about 38 or 39 or so when he became governor. So I can agree with you. Like the issues of the not too young to run bill. I agree that because of the energy and the creativity, the in, in innovation that comes with the young populace, they should be given a chance. Okay. But not a chance to be given to them when they have not put on the requisite uh, capacity and qualification. I, I'm even talking about not just in certificate and in knowledge. I'm talking about uh, discipline, composure, and maturity. All right, Alfred, let me quickly so come down to Adini here because of time, but I have to interrupt you here. So sorry about this now. But, you know, we, before I came to uh, uh, Alfred, before I went on break, we were talking about the presidential candidates which we have on our table now, a handful of young minds vying for the position of the president. Now, do you think they can be able to clinch this ticket in 2019? Okay, thank you. Uh, my view on this is, number one, it is rather in Nigeria, or say Africa, that we see political involvement or political participation as to, as to the winning ticket or actually winning the position. Involvement, inclusion does not really, you know, requires that you win. It requires adding value to good governance. Right. So, not until most of the time you win elections that you can add value. And this, I want us to inculcate as that is what is going to stop the era of do or die. Because there are people, I can name a lot of them for you. By Stafem um, the senior son, the son, um, Mr. Bakuba, mm -hmm. um, late Ganifa in me. Um, Beck or Razum Kuti, let me just put my mind to people that they are Nigerians that had probably not won an elective position into a government, you know, any government position or mm -hmm. senator or house of assembly mm -hmm. or whatever. But their contributions, their participation in governance, they are people that people want to listen to when it comes to policy, you know, making or decision or constitutional issues. So in a the, nutshell, it, the presidential hope candidates we have, they might clinic it, clinch the ticket in 2019? It might be difficult, let's be sincere. Okay. But what I'm advising is that even if they not, if they do not, they are stars, they are heroes, the young people that are offering themselves to serve, mm. they are heroes, they are stars, they should not see it as, okay, they did not get it and they have to, you know, okay. move back. We they go. should improve in the value to true governance. One, two is, after doing that, they can come back to contest for probably House of Assembly or okay. House of Representatives. Right. And after doing that, their impact will, will be, be felt. felt. When okay. it's felt, promotions can come. All right, that's and I tell you, to hold it the there, youth Adini. have the power right. to move Nigeria and take Nigeria to the greater... Now, closing you know, thoughts, great, great Alfred. Heart. What's your position on this whole issue before we wrap up the show? Uh, youth should be encouraged. They should be given the space. Uh, they should be encouraged by at least uh, the older ones, uh, because the truth is, uh, we can do a lot good, but we will do a lot more if we are being supported by the older ones. Just like they hand over their private companies to us, they should also dissipate that uh, confidence in handing over political positions to us. But I must warn: um, the youths should not should should also work out to tame all this form of genile uh, uh, tendencies of overreacting in okay. manners that will not All right, let's wrap up the show yes, right now. Uh, Thank you very much, Alfred Kemekpado, for your contribution on the program. And, of course, Comrade Adeniyi Ojikutu. Thank you very much for your Thank time you. on Thank the you. program Thank as well. You. Although there are more young people in the world today than ever, African youth are often excluded from major decisions with leaders effectively leaving behind a very unstable region for future generations. 
Now, there is no better time than now for youth to take their place in national leadership because the future starts, started yesterday and Nigeria is running late. And that's our package for tonight. But don't forget to join the conversation as usual on Twitter at TVC News NG and also follow me for updates around Africa at Esther TVC News. Until the next one again, I am Esther Mokwariola and always remember, Africa can only get better.